Hi all, I have another amazingly impressive attacking game from Leela to show you today. So Ethereal playing white against Leela ID 61133, so one of the recent 60 networks. The opening set is in the Sicilian Sveshnikov with the variation 7, knight d5. So quite often in the past, bishop g5 was considered the absolute main move. And after a6, knight a3, b5, threatening b4, white would either play usually bishop takes or knight d5. But here, 7, knight d5, as used in the Karana Colson World Chess Championship match, has caught a lot of interest recently. So knight takes, e takes, knight b8, c4, bishop e7. We start from this position, the end of the book, bishop d3, a6, knight c3, both sides castle, f5, and now usually players with white in over the ball play f3 to dissuade e4. There's a high level game which ended in the draw Peter Leko against Vladimir Kramnik in Monte Carlo 2003. So that was ending in a draw with this, for example. Move f3, it's been seen a number of times. In this game, we see rook e1, and you might be curious what do you do here? Do you really go forward? with e4, is that controversial? Well, in this game, e4 wasn't played immediately here actually. We have actually knight d7. And now we have the move h3. And now e4, the bishop goes back to f1. Bishop g5, trying to exchange off that dark square bishop. Knight a4, rook b8, bishop d2. And in fact, black takes that bishop. Maybe white would have an option uh, soon to move that bishop away. So it's taken while well, black can. Queen takes, now knight e5. So this is a big perk of this e4. You get that nice e5 square. Now I've seen a lot of Sveshnikov games where that e5 square is really, really useful for black to perch a knight like here. b3, we have b6, knight c3, and here, a very elegant attacking move. Uh, can you guess what black plays in this position? So if you're an attacking player, I hope you find this whole plan. Rook b7, yeah, to transfer the rook over. Queen c1. But how exactly, what would you play in this position after queen c1? It seems why it's waiting around, a bit planned this with queen c1. They say in chess, sometimes uh, having a uh, uh, a bad plan is better than no plan at all. That's a bit um, controversial, actually. Sometimes it's better not to do anything to create weaknesses. Sometimes. It depends. <laughs> is is it the ultimate, uh, I think, advice in chess and a lot of things. It all depends. But here, okay, queen c1, plan this, you could describe it. But how does black proceed on the attack here? What would you play as a caveman hack attacker player? I really like this next move. Five seconds, 500 points if you can get it. Okay, g5. Yeah, it seems actually quite justifiable here. Usually, you, one wouldn't be keen to move pawns near one's king. But in this case, how is black um, being punished for this? And it has a real upside, this rook can go to g7. So we have bishop e2. It's difficult for white. If g3, that's the weakness of the last move, just weakening f3. Thanks very much. We need the exchange for nothing. If f4, we can use the en passant rule. Thanks very much. If a3, we can still play rook g7 and push for g4. It's it's still really dangerous. I just, if we want to use a3 as a sort of scheme for a second rank defense, as an example, this is fictional continuation, just to show you. Black could try and crash through like this. Uh, so that's really, it's devastating stuff. Yeah, if, if the pawns come like that, it's it's going to be like mate soon. It's just a fictional example. So it's it's very passive for white here. So bishop e2, another planless looking move. Rook g7, rook b1. And now really another nice nifty move in this position. Can you guess? Another 500 points, black to play here. Okay, h5, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's something, It's it looks really dangerous, this, this pawn front. It looks super 
aggressive. Uh, so maybe a, a sort of metaphor with heat sinks. The bigger the heat sink, the better. The the bigger the attacking pawn formation, the better sometimes. Uh, so um, okay, here uh, let's let's see if g4 though instead. This is also actually rather dangerous, even like this with f4 and bishop takes that g file is super dangerous and could lead to devastation already yeah black somehow has managed to conjure up a, a huge attack here already h5 so rook f1 was played another plan in this move white hasn't really been doing anything bit of a punch bag here passive punch bag if bishop takes h5 g4 and that bishop is like a trappable piece after queen h4 here f takes yeah the bishop's coming off the board without too much compensation. So uh, rook f1, waiting around, g4. Queen f4, okay, celebrating the weakness of f4. Knight g6, queen h6. We have rook f6 here now, and the queen is also potentially quite trappable. Uh, so we have rook bc1 protecting that knight. If queen takes h5, uh, knight f4 well there's numerous moves which are really crushing but this is just going to win the queen <laughs> uh, so yeah um, rook bc1 queen e5 was played actually here uh, queen takes h5 knight f4 queen h4 rook h7 and white didn't bother trying this check uh, white played queen g3 we have king f7 so maybe that would have been uh, possible for the check anyway so both rooks look to be conspiring here um, instead of king f7 a knight takes e2 you might ask uh, with f4 is also actually quite dangerous even if the queens come off this is a really dangerous position uh, for white blacks really doing well there but king f7 queen h2 and what I really uh, find it attractive about this game as well as the earlier aggressive pawn moves is this doubling of the rooks here where white's rooks are just super passive yeah white is arranged like a punch bag on the chessboard here black's really ready the, for the punching with the doubling of the rooks like this c5 and yes guess what black does here if i give you five seconds to pause the video okay Rook takes h3, yeah. I thought, what a crushing game. G takes, rook takes. We have queen g3. And now another nifty move, indeed. Black to play here for another 200 points. Maybe even stronger than taking the queen. Queen h8. So threatening rook h1, matings the knight covering g2 here. <laughs> oh dear. Just to put that on the board, if queen takes, this doesn't have in check, and then that's made. So uh, f3 was played. Yes, doesn't look very good, does it? The escape square of the king is cut off, renewing rook h1, not even taking the queen. It's a bit sadistic. Uh, here's the end of the game. Queen takes and, and resigns, uh, basically. Auto adjudicate. If it continues, queen takes. That's hopeless a move, isn't it? And just it's just going to be mating very shortly. So I'll take you to the the game end position. So yeah, Afira really was a punch bag in this game. Black transferred a rook from the queen side to the king side. Use a massive aggressive pawn advance, uh, and made it look super easy to play this attack. Yeah, it looks as though rook e1 uh, by by allowing black to play e4. The big upsides there is uh, well first black can carry on with that idea of exchanging off dark square bishops but the e5 square is very juicy to use as a prelude to just a kingside avalanche of pawns as we saw in this crushing game i hope you enjoyed it as much as me if you uh, want to uh, learn about uh, the sicilian special call for playing like the sicilian in magnus colson style check out that free course lesson at king's crusher tv slash magnus by i am chess explained so that has a lot of resources and ideas to uncover there and train with. So yeah, kingscrusher.tv slash Magnus in small letters. Okay, thanks very much.